Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper right there, baby. You ever wanted to go out and catch king mackerel, also commonly referred to as kingfish? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you how, when, and where to target these highly sought after green water killing machines. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. So I want to begin with a statement uh, by saying targeting kingfish can be learned fairly easily. Uh, there are so many different techniques that finding a budget friendly one is not out of reach for the average angler. And with that being said, we're going to start out with some facts. Kingfish are in the mackerel family. They are voracious carnivores. They are what is considered a green water fish which more than likely means if you're in blue, deeper water, you're not going to find them. They live on the edge of the reef and they feed and prey on the smaller bait fish that feed on the forage that comes from the reef. Kingfish are pack hunters, which means if you hook one or catch one, there's more than likely more there. Kingfish feed in a hierarchical order which means the bigger the batter ones are going to feed first and the smaller juveniles are eating what's left over that the big boys don't eat there are two populations of king mackerel kingfish that swim around on north america the first population lives in the gulf of mexico the second population they migrate from North Carolina, all the way down the East Coast, past Florida, down to the coast of Brazil, and then they'll head back up north. In the springtime, they are heading north up towards North Carolina, and in the wintertime when the water's getting cold, they are heading south down to Brazil. Between the months of May and September, they head out deep to the continental shelf where they will spawn. This information is vital because they might not feed as heavily during those months, which is the off season for kingfish. Now, don't get this wrong. They do swim around and eat all year long. They are around, but if you're looking to target them, you don't want to specifically go between May and September. They're not going to be super easy to target and it won't be what's called a hot kingfish bite. I want to talk about the myth that kingfish have high mercury levels. It relates to the two populations of kingfish that I mentioned. The population in the Gulf of Mexico has been confirmed through studies to have some of the highest mercury levels that fish can carry. So eating kingfish from the Gulf of Mexico is not highly recommended. Next, the study conducted by the FDA shows that Atlantic kingfish, king mackerel, have some of the lowest mercury levels of the fish that they have studied. Eating Atlantic kingfish is perfectly fine. Now I want to talk about how to target kingfish. They live and they feed on the reef. So in your pursuit of kingfish, you're going to need to hunt for them over structure, over the reef, over wrecks, in the green water not deep you're not going out into the stream the ideal depth that you want to be targeting kingfish in is between 90 and 120 feet now granted they do swim in odd places they are fish i have caught a kingfish in 356 feet of water true fluke they don't hang out they don't swim there that is just not their natural habitat 
I've caught them in eight feet of water on the beach feeding on live Spanish mackerel. In general, if you're targeting them, the most prominent place to target them is on the edge of the reef, the 90 to 120 foot depth range. And they should be there. They feed in the water column from the top to about two thirds down of depth. They don't go necessarily all the way down to the bottom. It's very rare to find a kingfish hovering over the bottom, right on the structure. They're up on top and they're somewhere in between. All depends upon the thermocline and the current and basically where the food is. Once you've found the depth where they at, you will just want to repeat that process. If they're up on top, they're gonna be up on top. If they're down 35 feet or 50 feet, they're going to be down deep. Keep going for them down there. There's no reason to switch the process once you have found them. They are hanging out there for that particular day. They are fish and they swim. So what you did one day will not necessarily work the next day or the day after. Finding good kingfish spots takes time, experience, and observation. They are not always in the same spot. However, if you have found kingfish spots, it's always a trustworthy thing to go and give those a shot before you start doing your uh, research and development exploration. They feed heavily with a lot of water flow, especially the outgoing tide. So what happens is the tide is going out. It brings all the little debris and all the particles of food and stuff up off the, the reef and it sort of disperses it into the water with the current. The little fish and the bait fish come in and they start eating that and that motion and commotion draws in the predators such as the kingfish to feed on those smaller prey fish. And thus they start feeding and then that is the perfect time for you to target them. The best time that I have found to fish for kingfish is from sunrise to about 10 to 11 in the morning. After that time, the sun's coming up too bright, the water's warming up, they tend to head out deep and go and hide and relax until the nighttime. There is a nighttime kingfish bite, but it's not as trustworthy and predictable and something I would choose over morning time kingfishing if I have my choice. So that being said, we've discussed about when to catch them. You have the months. We're gonna look at fishing for them March through April and October through November. Those are prime times when kingfish are migrating up the coast and you're good to go. The next thing that you would be looking for is the time of day. More likely the morning low light levels before the sun gets too high. Also you would want to look for them when there is an outgoing tide. Heavy water flow that only increases your odds of a hookup. And so the last important factor of targeting kingfish is the weather. Kingfish like nasty, rough, dirty water. If there's fronts coming through, the water is all murky, the weather is rough, that is kingfishing weather, most definitely. What it does is it stirs up the water, the sand and the sediment from the reef gets all stirred up, it blinds the bait, they're swimming around trying to hide within the murkiness of the water and camouflage themselves to that greenish color. Kingfish have ultra keen eyesight and can spot prey in this water, no problem, and they dart for it and they kind of eat blindly, which is why it is the best weather for fishing for them. They're not looking at what they're eating. You're trolling by a bait that is, you know, the greenish bluish color of the water, which you will be trying to match. And there they are. Bad weather, good king fishing. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the different techniques of fishing for them. There are many, more than likely too many to go over because kingfish hit all sorts of different techniques. I'm gonna go over my favorite. The first way to fish for them that I'm going to talk about is top water trolling. When you're top water trolling, there's a key to speed. 
you need to be really going rather fast. You want to do between eight and 10 knots. You don't want to give kingfish a chance to come up and examine your bait. They can cruise at that speed with no problem. And like I said, they've got great eyesight so they can see anything that's going on. So if your bait isn't zooming by, it will more than likely not trigger that impulse to feed and they'll come up, look at your bait and swim right away. Happens all the time. What I want to do is I want to go over a few baits that I use that really trigger that impulse to feed on top water trolling. The drone spoon, particularly a green colored one, nice and shiny and it, uh, it wobbles all through the water and creates great commotion. Kingfish are attracted to it. A drone spoon, you're going to have to watch your speed when you're top water trolling. They don't necessarily troll right at eight to 10 knots. You have to watch and your rod is actually gonna be giving you a great amount of commotion right at the tip of it where it's uh, trolling right. So again, that speed is key to trolling a drone, sp drone spoon right. And it might be more in the six to seven knot range, but the commotion and the flash that the drone spoon is creating when it is trolling will trigger that impulse to feed on kingfish. What I want to do now is I want to show you how to hook a drone spoon to a wire leader just like this. To do this, you're going to need about 16 to 18 inches of wire, your drone spoon, haywire twist tool if you like to use it, which I do. If you don't know how to use it, I have a video on it. Check it out. And you're going to need a pair of split ring pliers. Now, when I say split ring pliers, I'm talking about it because it's got this little tooth right here. And it will open up the ring that is on the end of your drone spoon. I'll show you why you need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make haywire twists on either end of our wire leader. So I'll send it through the solid state of the haywire twist tool. Wrap it around and put it through the little channel. I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna give it about eight to nine twists. You want that wire to always be threaded on properly. All right, now that we got that, we will in our tag and we're gonna do some barrel wraps. All right, now we got plenty of barrel wraps, good to go. So to break that off, you just bend your wire leader, your little tag end, you bend that back and forth until it snaps off. And what this will do is that will make a non-sharp little edge right here that you can run your fingers over. Perfect, good to go. All right, now we're gonna make another haywire twist on the other end. Okay, so we've got two haywire twists on either end of our leader. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the drone spoon up to one end of it using the split ring pliers. So what you do is you stick it through and you want to pinch it down and you see how it opens up that split ring? That's what you're looking for. Now. You take the loop of your haywire twist and you put it in there. You release it and then you just pull it back and you wind it on as if you're putting a key on your key ring. And there you have it. That is how you use the split ring pliers to get your wire leader hooked up to your drone spoon. The next one I want to go over is one of my favorites, which is the white bucktail jig from Sprout. Everything in the ocean eats a white bucktail jig. You're going to hear me say this quite often. I use this particular lure to catch almost everything. Troll the white bucktail jig between 8 and 10 knots. Kingfish zoom right up. Go to hit it, and you're on. I don't use wire leader when I am trolling a bucktail jig, I use fluorocarbon. If you get a monster kingfish and he inhales the whole thing, you're going to lose it. Cutoffs are all part of fishing, but more than likely you will get the hookup. 
the way kingfish hit as a predator when they track down a fish and they're going after it is they tend to nip off the tail is their initial strike and then they'll come back around and then they will eat the rest of the fish cutting off the tail disables the prey then they come back and they inhale the rest of it so if you're trolling your lure along they're coming back here they clip it off then they come back clipping it off that hook is set right at the back of the lure more than likely get the hook up with it so I'm going to show you a little clip right here of a double header getting kingfish on the spro jig whoa now look now I've got a double on and get this guy in then I gotta get that guy in oh oh I got a kingfish Fish in the boat. Let's see what we got. Double header team fish. Can I complain? The next lure I target kingfish with up on top is a Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. This is the color pearl blue. It kind of matches the green murky colored up water, which is uh, what you want to do. Flash is what they're looking for. This is a double hook tandem setup. Again, out the back end of the lure. Where the tail is, where the kingfish would clip it off, is at the very back. You troll it at eight to 10 knots up on top. Pay attention to that GPS speed, not your odometer. You don't wanna be going 10 miles an hour over the water. You wanna be going eight to 10 knots over the land. And the final lure that I use for trolling on top water for kingfish is this, the gotcha jig. You might ask yourself, man, you troll a gotcha jig? Yes, you can troll it. it. It trolls just like the spro jig would. It's got treble hooks. So what I do when I'm trolling a gotcha jig for kingfish, I will change out these treble hooks to J hooks. This is one that I've used to troll for kingfish. I want you to examine it and look at all the teeth marks from it getting hit and beat up from kingfish. So. If you're asking yourself, man, does he really know what he's talking about trolling a gotcha jig? Yes, I troll a gotcha jig and it gets tagged by kingfish left and right, no problem. Topwater trolling for kingfish is fairly straightforward. What you're gonna do is you'll get your boat up to speed, you're gonna drop your lure in and start letting out your line. The way to judge the line you're going to let out is uh, about one second equals 10 feet of line. So if I'm trolling for kingfish, I would let out two lines, a short and a long. Typically one will be about 150 feet back and the other one will be between 250 and 300. If one second equals 10 feet, our short line will let out for about 15 seconds and our long line we will let out for about 25 to 30 seconds. Then you zoom in and out of the reef. You're gonna make slow, smooth, winding, S-shaped curves between 90 and 120 feet and you look for the bite. The next way to fish for kingfish is planer trolling. This is my particular way I would target kingfish. If somebody asked me, hey, I wanna go kingfishing. I said, okay, cool, no problem, I'll take you. I'm planer trolling for them. What you wanna do is you'll hook your main reel to your planer, hook your planer to about a 100 foot leader then you're gonna hook your leader to your lure with something like a bonita strip or a tuna strip or a barracuda strip. You'll plop it in and you'll get up You'll get up to speed. You'll drop your lure in the water. You'll let your line off your planter. You'll get going. You're gonna see a nice bend in your rod. 
and you wait for the hookup. Once your rod releases that pressure, which is creating that bend, standing more straight up, you've more than likely got a fish on. If you're in between the 90 and 120 area, more than likely it's a kingfish. These are the tools of the trade when it comes to planer trolling for kingfish. You'll need a planer, and you're gonna need a planer trolling rule. Typical trolling skirt or squid with a sea witch. And at the end of it, you would hook up a bonita strip onto your double hook tandem setup. Now, these lures come in all sorts of different colors. You make them they don't really sell them at bait shops. If they do, I, I don't know. They're too limited and um, I make them on my own. The possibilities are endless when it comes to creating a planer trolling lure setup. You can make them for clearer water if the water isn't too murky and use a brighter color such as like a pink or some sort of iridescent squirt squid and go with that. Hook it up with a bonita strip. If the water is murkier, I would go with the green setup, sort of, you know, like a, a blue and sort of chartreuse, silvery colored squirt squid and a green iridescent um, sea witch or something like what I had just showed you, which is like a blue, white and chartreuse skirt hooked up with a white and blue mylar sea witch on top of it. If you're in a low light level situation and you're heading out maybe a little deeper, you can probably use something such as a purple and go with that. Remember, kingfish have really keen eyesight. The darker lure in a low light level is not going to turn them off because prey camouflage themselves naturally. Lower light level, they turn darker. So you're not, you don't want to fool yourself by saying, oh, it's low light level. I need a brighter lure for the, so that they will see it. No, they see fine. What happens is they are uh, attracted to the noise. Fishing line and lures make a great amount of noise when they're trolled through the water. They can hear that. They can see it. They can smell it. That is what triggers the impulse to feed. Also, if you're planer trolling, you can use a drone spinner. Kingfish will definitely hit the drone on the planer. Uh, it's bait free. You don't have to put a strip on it or nothing. It'll click, create enough flash and enough commotion to trigger the impulse to feed. Another great way to fish when you're planer trolling is with a drone spoon. If they're not hitting the typical planer trolling setup of a sea witch and a skirt and a bonita strip, you can always give this a try if you're feeling frisky. When you're planer trolling, you're going to want to be doing between six and eight knots on your GPS. That's typical speed trolling for kingfish. Again, you're zooming by. You're going over the land at six to eight knots. You're not giving the kingfish time to swim up and examine your bait. You're zooming by, triggers the impulse to feed. They come they clip off the end of it, you should get the hookup. The best way to set up a planer trolling rig is to have one dedicated. What I've found works best is braid. My setup is a Penn International 30 with a 300 foot top shot of 80 pound braid. Then on my yo-yo, I have a hundred feet of 60 pound test. Now, this 60 pound test is tied on to two snap swivels at either end. Double clinch knot, if you're asking me what knot I'm gonna use to tie on to 
my snap swivels with 60 pound test. You'll put the snap swivel to your lure, which has about 16 inches of wire leader, beneath a strip, and you're good to go. So if I'm gonna hook up my planer, this is what I'm gonna do. I've got my 80 pound braid top shot. This is a 300 pound snap swivel. You need heavy gear because it's got a lot of tension on it, which is why you need this heavy gear. You can't go using light spinner gear or nothing. You need heavy conventional trolling reels with heavy rated rods. So, 300 pound snap swivel. What we're gonna do with this is we'll take the 300 pound snap swivel, we hook it into the ring of the planer, and we're gonna close that. So what happens is you'll be trolling like, you'll be trolling and when a fish hits, it'll pull it and it will let your planer travel up to the top. But as it's got tension on it, it's pulling from this point, which makes the planer dive down to about 30 to 50 feet, depending upon the size of the planer. This particular planer that I have, which is my favorite, is a number six planer. Planers go by different sizes and it is based on the weight not the plate okay so we've got our main line hooked on to the ring of the planer the next thing we'll do is we're going to take a swivel from our yo-yo and we are going to hook that to the ring on the plate of the planer close that and then we're good to go and then the other end of your planer you have another snap swivel and you will hook that up to your lure that you just made on one end with your wire haywire twist. And that is your basic setup of how you get set up for planer trolling. Main line hooked to the ring. Do not hook your main line over here. It won't work. You won't ever get your planer to set has to be hooked to the ring. Leader, 100 foot leader hooked to the plate. And then at the other end of your leader is your planer trolling setup. You can either do this or you can do a drone spoon. So if I'm wanting to use my planer and all this setup on a drone spoon, I hook the other end of my leader to the wire of the drone spoon. Fasten that on. And again, I plop it in the water and I'm good to go. Now what you're not going to see is the bobbing action of the end of your uh, rod while you're trolling this. But again, six to eight knots trolling this and you're pretty much going to get the proper action from the drone spoon that will trigger the impulse bite. The next technique for targeting kingfish I'm going to talk about is live baiting. You want to flat line out piece of live bait. Uh, this means you're going to have no sinker. You're going to have your hook hooked up with a short piece of wire 5OJ hook. The best bait for live baiting for kingfish is pilchards, cigar minnows, mullet, sardines. Any of these fish work fine. They are prey kingfish eat them all. So what you would want to do is you will hook your J hook through the nose, the back behind the dorsal fin or right behind the anal fin of the fish. Now why I'm saying these different parts is it's going to make your fish swim differently when you toss it out. Hooking him through the nose, he is typically going to Pull tight with your line and swim directly with the current going against them and that will create a motion and get the fish to come up and feed. Hooking him through his back will make him dive down into the water column. The reason I'm saying this is the prey fish that you have hooked up is going to swim away from pain. So if he's hooked in his back he's swimming away from the pain which is going to dive him down. If you hook him on the bottom side, right behind his anal fin, that will make him swim up on top and make little splashes and the kingfish will come up to the top and feed on him. 
I want to give you an example right now of how to toss out a live bait and get the kingfish hook up. And I'm going to hook him right through the nose. And he's good to go. I'm going to pitch him out and kind of let him swim for a while and then lock it up. My live bait just got eaten. We're good to go. It's a uh, little kingfish. Nice little kingfish. Another method of fishing for kingfish along the lines of flatlining out. Again, that means no sinker, no weight, no nothing. Hook and bait. You tie your main line on to your leader. Typically, I would say I'm going to use 20 pound test hooked onto a 40 pound monofilament filament leader. Maybe short wire, maybe not. If I'm doing this method though, I'm going with no wire. And then I would use a double or a triple tandem hook setup with a frozen sardine or a frozen sardine plug and you drift that out into the current over your structure and you know the average depth 90 to 120 feet where you know there's kingfish swimming around find them on your fish finder if you can drift that out wait for the bite again you're flat lining out you are consistently letting out line you're not stopping your line you're not closing your bell you're letting line out letting line out letting line out when a kingfish hits, he will whip that line out of your hand. You slam your bell shut, you reel it in. When he puts tension down on it, he's going to run. Kingfish give a powerful first run. Be prepared for it, and then you use finesse to reel him up. If you try and yank him up, as with any other technique, you're going to risk having a cutoff or having him widen up the hole in his mouth from having negative pressure put on. And when he gets to the boat and starts acting crazy, you could lose your fish. Don't try and force him up as fast as you can. It's a finesse game at this point. You've got him hooked up. There is no rush. Get him in, coax him to the boat. Because once he sees the boat and realizes that he's hooked, he's going to get mad. The next way of fishing for kingfish that I'm going to talk about is bump trolling. What you're going to do is you're going to go out and you're going to catch yourself a nice bait fish. Like a little bullet bonita, little Spanish mackerel, little Ciro mackerel. I would not recommend going out and purchasing goggle eyes specifically for kingfishing. Goggle eyes typically cost around eight bucks a fish, and that's a little bit too much for kingfishing. I would go sail fishing for if I'm purchasing goggle eyes. So you've gone out, you've caught your bullet bonita. What you're going to do is you're going to hook him to a stinger rig. We're going to hook him up to a to a stinger rig. We're going to put our first hook. Right through his nose. And then we're gonna lay the, then we're gonna lay our uh, our, other, our treble hook back on his back so that he swims straight. Throw them out behind your boat about 100 feet, 200 feet, and you're going to bump your boat forward in slow forward, put it back in neutral. Bump it in forward, slow neutral. Essentially, you are drifting a live bait in the current, but you're keeping your line kind of tight, making them kind of tug along and swim erratically, which should attract the kingfish bite. You've got a hook hooked through his nose, and then in the back side of him you've got a treble hook hooked on right behind his dorsal fin so what happens typically is like i said kingfish come 
they cut off the back side of the tail and that's right when you should get the hook up. If they miss that treble hook on the first time when they swipe off the tail and disable the fish, they come back, they gobble them up, you should get your hook up. Bump trolling takes practice, takes time. It is a craft to learn. First, you're putting two hooks in your fish. Secondly, you're moving your fish through water. Two things can go wrong. One, you can kill your fish by mishooking it. Two, you can kill your fish by drowning him, pulling him too fast while he's in pain and traumatized from having two hooks put into him. So once you learn the tactics of bump trolling and the specifics of it and you get into the zone, it works. It's a great way to have fun. There's many predators that eat on it, just not just kingfish. The last way that I'm gonna talk about, which I'm not gonna to hit too much on, uh, to go for kingfish is kite fishing. I don't recommend this. It's expensive, it's time consuming, it's an art and a science put together. If I was targeting kingfish, I would not go out of my way to go kite fishing for kingfish. Kite fishing is more for sailfish. Kingfish happen to be an incidental catch. Again, you're typically live baiting a goggle eye or live pilchard when you're kite fishing. And again, goggle eye, cost of kite rods and setups and everything is just not conducive to saying, hey, I'm targeting kingfish specifically with kite fishing. But it is something possible to do. It is not my top choice and I recommend staying away from it if you're targeting kingfish. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned about how, when, and where to target kingfish. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.